Hi, this is Salman Alana and Manos Perlakis, and this is case 214 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the open sesame technique, as well as other challenges for CTO PCI. The patient was uh, referred for PCI because of severe angina. He had previous coronary bypass craft surgery. And uh, he was known to have occlusion of the saphenous vein grafts with the lima to LAD being patent. This is his um, um, coronary angiogram with the native RCA that has a CTO. The distal vessel is filling through collaterals from the left. The lima is patent and is filling the LAD. And uh, there is significant disease in the native uh, left coronary artery. There is a significant distal left main disease, significant lesion into the first diagonal, and a CTO of the circumflex. So the question here is about revascularization and whether we should uh, perform PCI of the right coronary artery or the circumflex first. We can see here that there's some epicardial collaterals filling the circumflex, but again, severe left main disease, and there's also significant disease in the LAD and the diagonal. Our decision was to try the circumflex first because uh, the circ seemed to be more recent, and then going to the right coronary artery CTO would likely need retrograde crossing that could cause significant ischemia given the severe left main disease. So how to approach this lesion? The challenge here is that we have the LAD, we have a large ramus branch, but we don't understand exactly where the circumflex is starting. So we have an ambiguous proximal cap, but we do see that the length of the occlusion is relatively short because we have the retrograde filling from these lateral collaterals. The distal vessel is small, diffusely diseased, and the epicardial collaterals do not seem to be very favorable for the retrograde approach. So our plan was to go with undergrade wiring using IVUS to clarify the proximal cap ambiguity. And then uh, um, use retrograde, but again, we were not sure that these collaterals would be crossable. And finally, use ADR as the last resort because there was a bifurcation of obtuse marginal and circumflex at the distal cap. We tried to do IVUS, but IVUS could not be delivered. So we wired into the ramus and wired into the LAD, and then balloon angioplasty with uh, a 2 millimeter balloon. And this is what open sesame is about. This ballooning actually restored some undergrade uh, flow into the circumflex. This is the example of an open sesame technique. What essentially we do is we advance a wire into the side branch, which is next to the proximal cap. We inflate there, and that can sometimes uh, restore some flow into the occluded vessel and clarify the ambiguity, as was the case in this patient. Now, Pay close attention on the anatomy here. We do have this obtuse marginal branch that comes on top, and then we have the circumflex as well. We advanced a Sion black guide wire through a turnpike LP microcatheter, and that wire actually went down the anticipated course of uh, what seemed to be the obtuse marginal branch. We then used the Sasuki dual lumen microcatheter. Um, the Sasuki was used to advance the guide wire into the IM. Actually, the guide wire had gone into what we thought was the circumflex. We advanced the guide wire into um, what we thought was the first obtuse marginal branch. You can see here the wire is going. And then we decided to balloon, so we did the balloon inflation into that first IM. Oops, that was a problem. So it turns out that our wire was actually not into the OM. You see the OM has this more inferior course, but instead it was likely into a very small branch that now we've ballooned and now we have extravasation. So now the plot thickens, now we have um, a complication with actually not having a wire into the obtuse marginal branch. So what we did is we used the Sasuki again, and then uh, a workhorse um, guide wire, and we were able to cross uh, into the first uh, obtuse marginal branch. And then uh, we left the wire in the top branch, and since the extravasation was continuing, even though we did not have any effusion by echo, we decided to treat this. So we delivered two coils, two by 20 millimeters, 
into this uh, small branch through the Turnpike LP. And this is the nice thing about the Axiom coils. These are 0.014 coils and can be delivered through any standard microcatheter. The next question is how to treat these bifurcations. And this is a little more complex because we do have multiple bifurcations here. We do have uh, the OM, circumflex bifurcation. We have this LAD, uh, Ramus, and circumflex, essentially a trifurcation. And the question is how to treat it. And uh, what we decided to do, because the angulation was favorable, is to uh, place a T-stand. So stand T-standing into that Ramus branch and then place a stand into the circumflex, jailing that OM that didn't seem to have significant osteal disease, all the way back into the left main. So here is the stand, uh, goes all the way from the mid circumflex into the left main. And then uh, we performed uh, proximal optimization with uh, a 4.0 millimeter NC balloon. We rewired into the Ramus branch where we had placed the previous stand and did a kissing balloon inflation. However, when we did the angiogram afterwards, we saw that uh, that obtuse marginal actually had been significantly pinched, and also um, there was not good flow into the diagonal arteries. So now we have some more complexities. How to treat this? This is essentially salvage from um, uh, provisional stenting. And in this case, we decided uh, to use TAP, even though the angulation was not perfect. So we placed a 2 by 18 millimeter DS into the obtuse marginal branch, coming back slightly into the circumflex, deployed. Then we pulled the balloon back and did kissing balloon inflation. So this provided a nice result. We do see here nice flow into the obtuse marginal as well as the circumflex. And then the question is how to treat this other bifurcation here of this uh, branch who retrospectively actually was not a ramus but was a large diagonal coming off the proximal LAD. And we decided to go again with a provisional. We placed a small 2 5 by 12 millimeter DS into that uh, inferior branch, jailing the superior branch, we rewired into the kissing balloon inflation. And this provided a nice final result. So we do have restoration of flow in the left main into the circumflex obtuse marginal branch and this is the LED with a large diagonal that now has good flow as well. And Ivo saw that the expansion of the stents was good. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, in cases of proximal cap ambiguity, sometimes the open sesame technique, which is inflating a balloon into a side branch at the proximal cap, might help restore some flow into the occluded vessel and facilitate wiring. In this case, we ballooned into this LAD slash diagonal, and this restored some undergrade flow, which made wiring of the circumflex much easier. Second is about wire position. We first advanced the guide wire and the circumflex and used the Sasuki to advance the wire into the obtuse marginal, but then we did not confirm that we were in the actual vessel, we assumed we were, and then we ballooned, and that balloon caused the perforation because it turns out our wire had gone into a small branch. So never cannot emphasize enough the importance of confirming the wire position prior to advancing equipment and especially doing balloon inflations. How to treat this uh, small vessel perforation? We use the coil embolization. Um, Axiom 0.014 coil successfully sealed the perforation. And lastly, here we had multiple other levels of complexity, specifically treatment of multiple bifurcations, the circumflex OM, distal left main, and then we have a branch into this diagonal branch. And we use different techniques. We used the provisional for the OM1, but that did not work, so we had to use TAP, a salvage. We did T-stenting for that LAD into the diagonal, and then we did provisional again for the inferior branch and the superior branch of this diagonal. Thank you.